But we have to understand that intention and impact are two different things. So our intention might be to motivate our child and get them doing to do better and make better choices, but the impact is what matters most, right? How we make our child feel, how they interpret the things that we say is what matters most. <laughs> It is estimated that we speak anywhere from 7,000 to 14,000 words a day. <laughs> and in the sea of endless words that we are speaking throughout the day, we tend not to forget the words that are said out of anger. And I think it's so important to recognize our power as parents because there's just certain things we don't want to say, right? We can't say as parents. And, you know, what we say has the ability to either speak life over our children or not. It has the ability to either build their confidence and their self-esteem or tear them down and make them feel horrible about themselves. You know, we're either breeding their self-confidence and their sense of worth and agency over their lives, or we're causing a lot of doubt and low self-esteem. And it's, you know, not that these things are necessarily always so black and white, but I do want to just emphasize the point that our words are powerful. And so in this episode, I'm going to be shooting it to you straight, okay? We're going to be talking about the top five phrases we just don't want to say as parents, right? They have such a negative impact on not only our relationship with our child, but most importantly, our child's development and their sense of identity, how they see themselves and their place in the world, and also how they interact with other people and the relationships they choose and how they navigate these relationships. So we want to avoid these phrases like the plague, okay? (laughs) Really quickly, before we get into the phrases to avoid, I would just want to say I'm Dr. Jasmine. I am a clinical psychologist and a mom of three. I often forget to introduce myself, so I'm trying to get better at that. Um, around here, we talk about all things parenting, child development, and really our mindset and our own mental health and how all of those three things intermingle with each other. But anyways, let's dive into the episode. Phrase number one that I want you to eliminate from your vocabulary is you're making me so angry, right? It's really important that we take responsibility for our feelings. Our child is not responsible for how we feel. Sure, their behaviors, their choices, the environment, they impact our feelings, right? They influence, but at the end of the day, Those are our feelings and we have to take full responsibility for them. I want you to understand too that when we say phrases like this and when we hear phrases like this, let's say somebody else is telling us this, this is a form of subtle manipulation, right? It is to say, okay, I am feeling so angry because really I feel powerless. I've perceived that I've lost my control in this dynamic and I want to regain that control back. So I'm going to cause you harm. I'm going to inflict fear and guilt so that I get you to do what I want you to do, so that I'm in the driver's seat, right? This is manipulation, and I know we don't mean it like this, right? We don't mean to manipulate our child and their emotions and their choices, but we have to see it as this, because this is what it is. We also need to recognize that this dynamic and these types of phrases really negatively impact the parent-child relationship, right? It's going to weaken your connection with your child, and it's also going to cause them stress. So what happens in our brains when we perceive threat and we are in fear is that our body goes into a stress response, right? We're either going to fight back, which means we're going to get defensive. We're going to get angry back. We're going to attack you back, or we're going to flee. We're going to jet out of there, right? Kind of just get out of there at all costs, run away, or we're going to freeze and we're going to become numb and frozen and we don't respond at all, right? So this is what your child does when they're stressed. And when we're saying, you're making me so angry, right? We're attacking them. It's an incredibly scary place for our child to see us angry 
and feel responsible for our feelings, right? Feel like they are to blame for how we feel. That's an incredibly scary place to be as a child. So they have no other choice but to perceive that threat and then do something about it, right? And either fight, get defensive and attack you back, leave the situation, run away, or just emotionally shut down and go numb. I also want you to realize is whenever we make somebody else responsible for how we feel, we are giving them power, right? We are essentially saying, now you fix me, (laughs) right? And nobody else can fix us. That's not their responsibility. Anger is an inside job. It's on us to self-reflect, recognize how we're feeling, understand our triggers, and take action to change the situation, our mindset, what have you, right? This is an inside job that nobody else can do, especially not our child who can barely even (laughs) do that for themselves, right? So instead, when you find yourself wanting to say phrases like this, like you're making me so angry, I want you to pause, take a step back. And I want you to say, I'm angry right now, right? I'm upset. I'm feeling overwhelmed because I feel like something is off between us. We're not really working as a team. So I'm going to take a step back. I'm going to take care of my body so that I can think clearly about this situation and so that most importantly, we can work as a team and we can get back on track, right? That is calm, confident leadership in action. You're taking accountability and you're showing your child, you're modeling for them how to emotionally regulate, how to take accountability for our feelings and reminding them that the connection that you guys have is most important, right? This this thing, this conflict, this little mishap, we're going to get through this, okay? We're going to get through this as a team. It's not going to come between us. But first, I recognize I need to take a step back and calm my body down so that I can think more clearly. Always remember, if you take nothing else from this episode, children are not responsible for adults' feelings, right? That is our responsibility. It is our job to calm ourselves down, be the mature person in the relationship, not our child, okay? As much as we wish for that to be in the moment, <laughs> we have to put, put our big girl and boy pants on <laughs> and take leadership. And this is what leadership sounds like in the moment, right? I am feeling angry. I take responsibility for those feelings. Okay. Number two phrase to erase from your vocabulary is you're dumb. You're stupid. You're, you're, you're whatever, fill in the blank, right? Whatever kind of put down that you want to say. And oftentimes, you know, there are parents in the world, unfortunately, that say those things. And you might've heard this from your parents, but there's also those subtle forms of criticism, those jokes, sarcasm, right? It's like a joke masked as a form of criticism. It's a way for us to get you to try to change your behavior, something that we don't like, and we're trying to criticize you into better behavior, if you catch that, right? Um, So it can be as blatant as, you're so careless, or stop being so stupid, or quit being so annoying. Or it can be, well, that was smart, right? Where you're being sarcastic, (laughs) rolling your eyes and all of that good stuff, right? That is also, again, criticism. And what we know about criticism and for children who are raised with critical parents, research tells us that what children come to learn is to use avoidant types of coping skills, to navigate and survive. So they will be more likely to procrastinate, use passive aggression or rumination as a form of coping. Another interesting thing that comes out of the research on children with critical parents is that they come to avoid the emotional facial expressions of others, both good and bad. And so what this does is it negatively impacts their relationships, right? Where they are not as good as re- at reading other people's you know, cues, understanding social dynamics, communication, right? Because they're more avoidant of those emotional facial expressions, they're not picking up as much. And it also hinders the connection that they feel with other people. Now, this is all, you know, 
research based and it's not like a one to one relationship where this causes this, but there is an association between those things. And so we want to be really mindful of the critical statements that we give our child, especially when we feel judgment towards their behavior. So when children get it quote unquote wrong, It's important to focus on problem solving, not the actual problem. My mom used to always say, if you're not a part of the solution, you're part of the problem. And I really love that statement because when I remind myself of that in the moment, it helps me focus on what's most important, which is to stay connected with my child, stay, you know, in a kind of we're a team spirit and focus on problem solving. It also reminds me that one most issues are fixable. It's my responsibility to take the lead as the parent and find the solutions to the problems, right? Of course, I want to allow my child to have input and say, but it ultimately is my responsibility to take the lead and model what problem solving looks like. It also reminds me that tearing my child down does nothing to improve their behavior. It actually makes it worse and that I can't use my child as a means of venting out my emotions, right? When Whenever I feel anger bubbling up, that's my sign to slow down, take a pause, take space, and you know, take care of myself and then to focus on problem solving. Okay, what's the next best thing that I can do in this situation to move towards the goal of resolving the issue? So I, this is just your gentle reminder that in the heat of the moment, choose your words very carefully. Children do not forget what we say to them, um, especially when it comes to the negative critical statements that we make about them and their character. And if you're needing more help with managing your triggers and, you know, dealing with your intense anger in the moment, don't worry, I got you. I That's why I created, one of the biggest reasons why I created my online program, the Positive Discipline Academy, is to help support parents through their emotions because I realize we can't help children through their emotions <laughs> if we're losing it and we're spiraling and we're totally over overwhelmed, right? Like those two things have to go hand in hand. We can't talk about one without talking about the other. So um, be sure to check out my discipline academy. You can go to the mompsychologist.com forward slash academy and the um, links will be in the description in the show notes of this episode. Now, phrase number three is why can't you be more like your fill in the blank brother, sister, cousin, peers at school, what have you, right? Why can't you just be more like that person, right? It's another form of criticism, right? I'm upset at you. I don't think you're measuring up. I see somebody else who's doing it better and I want you to be like that person. Now we might say these things in an effort to help our child improve and motivate them towards better. But we have to understand that intention and impact are two different things. So our intention might be to motivate our child and get them doing to do better and make better choices, but the impact is what matters most, right? How we make our child feel, how they interpret the things that we say is what matters most. And the fact is, is that whenever we compare our child to somebody else, like their siblings, we are causing resentment. (laughs) We are weakening the parent-child relationship and we are fueling sibling rivalry and sibling hatred. We are doing nothing to improve their behavior. We're actually worsening it. I also want you to realize too that when the other child, the one who's being glorified, the one who's the better one, when they're put on this pedestal, now all of a sudden they have immense pressure to keep their status, right? And that is also really unhealthy for that child. These statements um, are dysfunctional (laughs) and they cause weird dynamics between whoever you're comparing, I'm thinking siblings, let's just go with siblings. So they cause weird sibling dynamics and they lower your child's self-esteem and they weaken their connection with you. And so really you want to avoid any comparisons, whether it's a good comparison or a bad comparison, and focus your language on the actual event, not your child, not their character, their personality, right? Just keep it focused on what happened 
And what your child did, the behavior, not who your child is. You also want to keep your language focused on what you observed, not what you speculate or what you fear or what he said, she said. No, what do you know? What are the facts as you understand them? And then most importantly, like I said earlier, how to problem solve, right? We don't, (laughs) that's the most important thing. How do we get through this? If it's not focused on the solution, we, no, I don't want it. (laughs) Okay, that's really, really important because, again, dwelling on the negative and dwelling on the issues and dwelling on the critical statements, it's not moving the needle forward. It's moving us backwards. And it's also causing you to spiral and feel more overwhelmed. So it's just it's a no. It's a no for me, dog. And remember, you know, children in general, they make better choices when they feel better about themselves, right? Tearing our child down and talking about their character or pinning them against another person and comparing them to somebody else, that is not making them feel better about themselves, right? That is making them feel like they don't measure up. And so as parents, you know, you're the one that they look to for the messages, right? Messages about who they are and their identity and how to feel about themselves and how to understand their place in the dynamic (laughs) of these relationships and in the family system, right? They're looking to us because we are the leaders for information on these things. And so it's really important that we make sure that our language is positive as best or neutral at best, right? if anything. And just a gentle reminder, children do better when they feel better, right? Tearing our child down and talking negatively about their behavior and comparing them to their sibling does nothing to build them up. It actually tears them down, which leads to even more negative behavior and more sibling rivalry. So remember, children are looking to us for information on how to perceive themselves, right? What type of person they are. Are they good? Are they bad? What, um, Are they a valued member in the family system, right? And how they compare to other people, as well as, you know, how to understand and relate to others, right? They're looking to us because we are their confident leaders for this information. And so while they are developing, especially, we just need to be really careful on the language and we want to avoid comparing them to anyone else, right? They are one of one, (laughs) okay? Another thing I want you to stop saying is stop talking to me or go away. And, you know, I'm really passionate about parents taking breaks. I don't think we get enough breaks. Parenting can feel very stressful and overwhelming. We can feel really touched out. I mean, the list goes on, right? So I am a huge advocate for taking space and taking breaks as much as we can, right? This is a marathon. This is not a sprint. But there is a difference between pushing our child away versus taking space on our own right? It's very subtle, but it's very important, right? I'm going to go take some space is very different than saying you need to go take some space, right? You need to leave me alone. And we have to realize that whenever we push our child away in that way, it is a form of rejection and it's going to send them spiraling. You're going to, they're going to have more intense feelings. They're going to tantrum. They're going to get aggressive or they're more likely to tantrum and get aggressive. They're more likely to engage in power struggles with you and all of that, right? Because you're rejecting them. You're telling them, go away, leave me alone. And so what I want you to get in the habit of when you need a break, because again, breaks are a necessity, (laughs) In parenting, especially when you're parenting little ones, but you just say, I'm going to go take a break, right? I'm going to take a quick break. I'm feeling overwhelmed. I need some space. I'm going to run to the bathroom real quick and I'm going to take space. Or you just don't even say anything at all. And you say, just, I'll be right back. I'm going to go to the bathroom. And then you debrief, you reconnect when you're in a better headspace. Okay. The fifth final thing to avoid saying to your child is why are you being so difficult? what is wrong with you? Or why are you doing that? Okay. Now it is very different from, hmm, I wonder why you did that. (laughs) Hmm, help me understand your choices and why you decided to do it that way. I'm, I'm curious versus why did you do that? Okay. So oftentimes it's not what we say, it's how we say it, right? In the tone and basically what we're saying, what we're implying. Why did you do that is like you did something bad, (laughs) right? Um, 
that is again another form of criticism and so it's just worth stating again when your child's behavior starts to overwhelm you take a step back and focus on problem solving because we have to just be real with ourselves. asking those rhetorical questions does not move the needle forward <laughs> okay they're just knee-jerk reactions when we get overwhelmed and we're angry and we want our child to change in that moment okay so instead of asking them a question that puts them down I want you to train your mind to ask a better question. And the better question is, how can we move forward, right? How can we work better as a team? Hmm, let me think about this. I'm open to your suggestions, but that's what I'm focused on. I'm focused on moving the needle forward in this interaction. So in summary, you want to avoid phrases that make your child feel like they're responsible for your feelings, subtle forms of criticism disguised as jokes and sarcasm, blatantly attacking your child's character, personality, or comparing them to someone else like their siblings. And when we encounter conflict or an issue in the relationship, the most important thing is to slow down, take a beat. Gather yourself as best as you can. (laughs) We're not going to be perfect with this. Take responsibility for your feelings, right? This also helps with your regulation. Okay, I'm feeling angry right now. All right, that's all right. I take responsibility for my anger. And most importantly, focus your energy on problem solving because words are powerful, right? Words matter. Children don't forget what we say in the heat of the moment. Now, I've been shooting it to you straight this episode, right? Can you tell I'm passionate about this? (laughs) I'm passionate about children's overall well-being. And I know how impactful the language that we use with them is. And so I hope that this episode helped shine some light on some things you can avoid or just look out for and instead what to focus on. But I want to end with just a brief discussion on self-compassion, right? We cannot shame ourselves into better parenting. And just as critical statements towards our child harm them, critical statements towards ourselves harm ourselves, right? And so it's most important, again, the spirit of this episode. If we are not a part of the solution, we're part of the problem. So yes, take accountability, reflect on your anger. Remember, like I said, anger is an inside job. This is our job to do, to understand, recognize our triggers and deal with whatever issues we have or strengthen our mental health and take better care of ourselves. whatever it is. This is our work to do. And there's a fine line between taking account- accountability and bashing ourselves. And I don't want you to get into that area, right? Because that leads to doing more of the things we hate, right? It's just like when our child feels better about themselves, they're going to make better choices. Well, when we feel better about ourselves, we as the parents make better choices. So I just want to end off by reminding you that self-compassion during this journey is so important, right? We're all learning. (laughs) We are all life learners in this game of life, okay, and parenting specifically. And so there's no way for us to get this 100% right. So if you're like, oh my gosh, as you're listening to this episode, I've said this, I'm such a horrible parent, I'm ruining them, I'm ruining their childhood, you know, you're kind of starting, you're finding yourself spiraling, Okay, notice that. Notice those critical statements. <laughs> okay, this is very meta, right? Just like we're doing with our parenting, we want to do it with ourselves. But notice it, offer yourself compassion, and instead ask, what is the solution here, right? What is the next best thing I can do to strengthen my mindset and strengthen my approach? And If you are looking for more guidance, more tools on your mindset and your approach, shameless plug, (laughs) uh, check out my online parenting program, Positive Discipline Academy, because like I said earlier, it not only walks you through how to be a more calmer, regulated parent, but then it teaches you how to do, how to teach your child those same skills, how to overcome, you know, challenging behaviors and issues with parenting in a more connected, grounded, intentional way. I'm really proud of the program. I've had hundreds of students go through it and they've seen such incredible results in their families within, uh, 
months, not years. Okay. So you can go to the mompsychologist.com forward slash academy if you'd like to learn more. Again, all the links will be in the description in the show notes. And let me know down in the comments, you know, what is something that your parents said as to you when you were a child that you will never forget? I think it's important, like self-reflection question. If you feel called to, you can share your responses in the in the comments below if you're watching on YouTube. But either way, like reflect on some of those things that really stung as a child and what really stuck with you. Um, that can be a really eye-opening exercise for yourself and just kind of put yourself in your child's shoes in that way. All right, that is it for this episode. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.